again, and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we're back after a week off because of that crazy snow. Um, that was that a, was a like, lot of snow for well, early it December. Was. <laughs> and it was, even though there were, I mean, I knew there would go, was going to be tons of snow. And we don't really stress about it because Dan works from home. I mean, you can relate to this. Dan works from home. So if it's really bad, he still works. Um, I work literally like three tenths of a mile away from my house. So do you it, actually walk to work? No, I'm lazy. It's <gasps> you terrible. are lazy. <laughs> well, I think the biggest thing is because then at lunch Sometimes, I have to walk yeah. back. Like I have no problem I'm running walking. errands. Well, and that just kind of getting stuff, home and having right. time at home for lunch. So yeah. it, it is really, really pathetic thing that I walk the three tenths. I mean, I don't walk the three tenths <laughs> of a mile to work. We'll forgive you. Tammy. So, so I mean, both of us can work when we need to, um, and we are, you know, people that have milk and well, we don't actually have milk, but you know what I mean. We don't. We have food in our house. Right. So the snow really doesn't impact us. Um, we're spoiled that way. Yeah, I mean, I spent, I did all the snow blowing. I was determined on, uh, must have been Tuesday after it finally stopped. I was out there for like three hours because I have like a parking lot behind my house. It, uh, three hours and I was like crazy. I was determined though. It was a lot of snow. I live on the end of a cul-de-sac yeah. and the trucks actually, the plow trucks yeah. will turn around in our cul-de-sac. And every year we've been there, they've actually pushed the snow oh, up wait, towards out to one side, the that, end. Yeah. But this year, for some reason, they just went around. So we had this cone of <laughs> snow that was well over six feet in the middle because other yeah. you know, had gotten pushed there. And I was like, if that uh, stays for the whole winter, we're going to have, like, the leaning tower of snow Well, and there pizza. was a lot of people online complaining about um, the quality of the plowing, I felt. Don't you think, you know, uh, to, to jump in there, but, you know, I like to say government. There's an app for that, right? <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, the, the way with tech and stuff... I think the future is that so much of what government does can become part of the gig economy, mm. right? Because we don't really need to have, like, all these people. Yep. I mean, I'm sure the Department of Transportation is actually probably too big because in some ways they need to be scalable right, when we right. have these big storms and that kind of stuff. So imagine, like, down the line, 10 years from now, you could just be like, boop, 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 boop. And, you know, and then we would only have to pay when people are actually well, doing the was work. A, it was and... interesting because I did see a post, I think it was from, I think it started with Alderman Lovasser saying, why don't we do things more like Nashua? I guess Nashua contracts out um, to private con to private plowers to do some of the side streets. And somebody commented back, oh, that's because the um, depart the union contracts in Manchester prohibit the city. The unions prohibit the city from hiring contractors. I mean, who is in charge here? Can well, I just what, ask that question? That's what, but that's what I was like. I'm like, this is kind of ridiculous because it just seems like sometimes we no longer ha seem to have the best interests of the community. You know, like plowing was a good example. And, you know, I, 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 live, <laughs> I live on a main street, so I know I'm getting plowed, yep. right? I used to live on Parker Street, which was not a main street, and but it always got plowed. You could always get out. I drove by, um, I think I went over there on Tuesday, probably two, oh, maybe it was Wednesday, to see, um, we had lent our driveway to somebody to see if it had gotten taken care of or whatever, and um, it wasn't done well. I mean, there were three nights in a row of snow emergencies, and I get why they do it. If there's no cars on the street, they can come through and plow. That makes sense. But then you drive on the streets after these three days of snow emergencies and the snow's still there. And you think, well, then why did those people have to... I mean, maybe there should be a two-tier snow emergency system. Maybe when they do snow emergency, it's not every street. You know? I mean, it, there's certainly a hundred different ways. I it think, just seems given, like we're not t getting it. Well, the thing is, you know, like... We, we, we're sort of so stuck in these these old paradigms, you know, like I do a lot of interviews yeah. and I talk to a lot of people, right? And I remember I did one with NHPR years ago and it was uh, Brady Carlson. And one of the things we talked about was like, either we've reached like the pinnacle of human evolution yeah. and everything is just like the way it should be, or we're kind of stuck in some some bad habits maybe yeah. and stuck in some, some old-fashioned things and i'm like technology has changed so much over the years and it's made things 
there's so many better ways we could be doing yep. things than we are. But I did want to mention uh, one thing uh, with regard to snow emergencies for people who might not know. Yep. On the west side behind the ice rink, there is a huge parking lot yep. that uh, is kept open and that is available for snow emergencies between 6 and 8 a.m. I believe in the mornings you can go park there overnight. So if you're looking for a space, yeah. that's a uh, pretty I, it's easy gotta place to It's got to be really to hard for anybody who doesn't have parking have i can't even imagine i know and then the other thing i wanted to say was i saw a really funny meme on facebook that was uh uh, one of my things is when they don't clean the sidewalks because, you know, I have a dog and I yeah, like to yeah. walk and I like to be out and about. And I saw a photo from, I believe it was in Manchester, that had a, sort of a shut down a sidewalk and yeah. everything was cleared. You know, the everyone, yeah. homeowner cleared it, except the one house that had a Bernie Sanders sign outside. So it was kind that of was plopped kind of in funny. the snow. And it made me laugh because, you know, you can either be the kind of person who's like, I take responsibility yeah. for myself yep. and I'm going to go do what I need to do, yep. or you can sit back and assume someone Somebody else is going to take well, care of stuff for you. On, and you know what? They didn't. It was not on clean. the sidewalk thing. So when I lived on Parker Street, we never. Well, I shouldn't say we never. We rarely um, took care of the sidewalk actually in front of our house, in part because my neighbor would put all of their <laughs> snow on that sidewalk. Oh wow! Because there literally just was no place Nowhere to put the snow. To put it. So then our snow had to go onto the sidewalk, be, you know, like it was this vicious thing. <laughs> and there literally was just no way that all winter long it could be. Right. But it was also a side street. Now, when I we moved to Varney Street, I remember being really surprised to see that the city would come through with this little snowplow and do the sidewalks because it's a main road. And I thought, well, that's kind of nice. Not only do I have sidewalks with curbs, because that was a big joke when we bought the house. If it didn't have curbs, I wasn't buying it. And, um, but so they do it and they usually come through in the middle of the night. Like they'll come through while I'm sleeping. You get up in the morning and ta-da, they're done. Last summer, I noticed, um, that the edge of my yard had gotten torn up and I thought, oh, they just, you know, something, then I started paying attention when I was walking places and I was noticing other people's yards torn up. And then, so now I'm on, like, what's going on? Well, we've switched to a different plow, mm. which is wide, which it, for wide city streets would be great. Like, it makes sense. You could get more of a path, except for it's too wide. So now they go up the sidewalk, which don't get me wrong. I appreciate that they're doing it. But today when I pulled out of my driveway, I'm like, why do I have such an ugly snowbank? Oh, that's because a good... 12 or 18 inches of my lawn oh, no. and the mud is now on my uh, on the snowbank oh. and a part of the th if you look it just they literally don't fit on the sidewalks anywhere there's a telephone pole or anything they have to go around and there's a house across the street like kitty corner down the way that has like a telephone pole with a guide wire so they just plow up to that and then they go out and they go around so they because mm -hmm. they can't. And they don't get out and shovel that little spot that they can't fit. They just leave it there. So if you were walking up the sidewalk, you're like, well, now what? Now I have to go backwards. <laughs> now I have to assume this is a Bernie So it goes back to the... Cause it, <laughs> right. Sorry, somebody guys. said, you know, like, well, why aren't the guys hopping off the little snowplow and clearing those two feet that they can't do? And then we... And I'm like, well, yeah, because that's... We just no, don't seem to be using common sense. So... I, but well, if we had a gig economy for the government, because government, there's an app for yeah. that, you could have different people who would say, oh, I'm just going to do that. Right. You would have a map that someone could drop pins in to be like, here we have a problem. Yep. Here we have a problem. Here we have a problem. Yep. I mean, you could have another person come. I mean, I'm just I saying, just, folks, there's just got to be a, a better lot of community effort I and think. better ways we could be doing things, which brings us to charter schools. Oh, yeah. <laughs> better ways to do things. So... Uh, if you haven't been on Facebook for the last, you know, eight weeks or whatever it was, um, the joint leg or joint fiscal committee, joint legislative fiscal committee, maybe um, some kind of joint, some breaking. joint group, the, the, some state rep, state senator group committee um, tabled forty six million dollars in federal money. Now, keep in mind, New Hampshire is a donor state, so we give more money to the federal government than we ever get back. So we're going to be able to get $46 million from the federal government, which means we'd be getting back more of the money we give to D.C., to uh, support charter schools, which would allow us to um, 
expand some charter schools throughout New Hampshire. And this committee tabled that. So, you know, so there are a few things I want to talk about because I read a pretty interesting essay because, you know, obviously I'm someone who believes my education, my choice. Mm -hmm. I believe that more choices for everything mm -hmm. actually results in a happier, healthier society because you actually get to live the way you want, right. right? Which is what the free market offers and which is why we should have more sort of free market economics. But with this charter school stuff, so it's a lot of money, but it's also kind of, it, it may create a little bit of the wrong incentives. So the essay I read was yes. by uh, Ian Underwood, and he talks about like sort of this idea of there's no such thing as a free lunch. Right. And we all know there is no right. such thing as a free lunch, not even in Claremont. Not even in Claremont. <laughs> um, and so this money is going to go to to basically double the size of our charter schools in the state. The size or the number, right? The number, right? right? And so that sounds grand because I do think there is a need, right? Mm -hmm. We know that certain children learn differently and certain children thrive in different right. environments. But are we setting ourselves up down the line to be like, okay, if we're not going to reform our public schools, which needs to happen, yep. um, are we just kind of doubling up? So now we have we have all this money going to the the, the public the the straight up public schools, and of course, charter schools are public, public schools, schools yep. right? And they do actually, regardless of what uh, <laughs> the, you know, the, tells you. the the Democrats' propaganda is, they do actually have to comply they with have all the same rules they have, that right. public schools they, have to comply right. with they have to report to the department of education, education. and all that stuff you know, they have to take all students they yeah. have to like all of that stuff right um and yet somehow they cost half the price mm. in terms of of what it costs so fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars versus seven thousand six hundred ish um they can cost half the price and the outcomes are at least as good if, if not, not better, better exactly right? so here we have two comparative situations so the question becomes why the disparity? Yes. And also, if we're going to push more money into the charter schools, yes. which I think we should. I mean, this is New Hampshire's money, so yeah. we we may as well take. I mean, it seems crazy to to reject to, to, it to not take it's, the money it's that our we money, mail them, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's our money that we sent, so let's let's get some of it back. But let's also then use that as, as an opportunity to look at the straight up public schools and say, how can we reform it, or how can we, you know, so let's how not we... create this second class of schools and and take the money once right. because you know we do criticize the Democrats often, and so I feel like we have to, right. you know, not be hypocritical and we have to be true and fair and say that if we're saying you know don't take this federal money unless you know you can actually sustain this right. over the long term. So I do think we should be. Looking looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, I know that on Friday, there's going to be a big uh, hoopla yeah. up at the State House. So if at you are 10 a.m. in the Legislative Office Building, rooms 210 to 11 on Friday, December 13th. So if you're watching this on um, Manchester Public Television, you missed it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but if you are watching it now on That's Facebook, right. uh, we would love to see you on Friday, 10 a.m. up at the State House. Um, Go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, if you live in Manchester, because since this is Manch Talk and all that, um, perhaps you could reach out to Senator Lou D'Alessandro because he was one of those that did not think that we should take this money. Well, he also, I mean, not Didn't just seem because he's, you know, d uh, you know, my arch nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so so Uncle Lou, of course, is senator, and and I'll probably be running yes, against him will. again. So. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think that he he just straight up lied yeah. to well, the committee um, because I, he knows better than to say yes. it is and not he's, a and, he, and he's one of those people, who, I mean, I just saw a picture where he was out, somebody posted a picture on, I forget what, about, oh, thank you from the Goffstown schools because once a year he goes and visits all the schools. Uh, okay, but... But what would be do? Well, you but, know, and I just feel like you know, Lou's eighty-two years old. He's, old. he's been in in the state house now for over twenty yep. years. If we're back to that sort of idea of maybe we should be looking towards the future and yep. actually picking people who know, I don't know how a smartphone works, what <laughs> Facebook is. Uh, I think we could do better. Um, but if you'd like to reach out to Lou between now and Friday the thirteenth, his email is Lou dot D'Alessandro. That's D A L L. E S A N D R O at L E G dot state 
.nh.us. That's the legislative emails. Lou.dalessandro, D-A-L-L-E-S-A-N-D-R-O, at leg.state.nh.us. So send Lou an email and say that you think we should keep, take that $46 million that the feds want to give us um, and, and do some things to help some of, I printed it out because I love the words. It came from either the state GOP or whatever. Um, because this grant money will target to help at-risk children with learning disabilities, some with learning disabilities. This is not for the rich of New Hampshire. This is for the kids that really need an alternative and their parents can't afford to either sell their house and move to a better community or put them in private schools. And, and you know, and genuinely, I will say, I think I mentioned this in the past, but, you know, I go to school choice stuff from time to time up at the state yep. house, and I was genuinely surprised when when i saw a lot of the recipients of the school scholarship wonderful fund. kids these are these are not you know elite no. kids these are not like private school people these are genuinely low income families who are genuinely benefiting by being able to go to, to schools a, that fit their needs. Yeah. In fact, I mean, there was one kid who said he wore a, a Christian t-shirt and so he got beat up in the bathroom of his public school for being a Christian. And then he moved to, a, I think it was a Christian academy or yeah. something in Concord. And like when he was testifying, just that sort of peace of mind, yeah. you know, where he just said, you he, know, it made such a difference in his life to not have right. to go to school every day and get beat up for his beliefs. So, you know, keep that in mind. You know, it's 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 fine. It's actually not fine, you know, for the unions just to say, you know, there's one way. Only there one isn't way. one way. I mean, there's not one and way for And anything. go back to the same thing. <laughs> Who's in charge? The unions yes, or, or us. us. I think we should be in charge. Not me and Carla personally, although I do think me and Carla personally could do a better job. But Dictator for life. <laughs> um, but I think you, we can't have the public unions. They have their own interests. There is, you know, I mean, anybody who doesn't be, uh, can't see that the unions have their own self-interest first, not the community first, not the, 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 the community as a whole, and we kind of have to. So did you see in the Sunday paper there was uh, a breakdown? So the union leader over the past couple of weeks has been doing this. this uh, hmm. First of all, they had to file right to no requests yes. in order to get any of this information. So the information is, of course, the salaries yep. of uh, our municipal uh, folks, as well as, and, and Sundays was the teacher unions, yes. right? Yes. Or the teachers, yes. right? Yes, the, the school side and the municipal, uh, municipal side. Municipal yep. side. And so, uh, if you're interested, it's actually a searchable database yes. on the union It is quite, com. it was quite, I like that So you could search, you like, you know, if you have a, you know, arch nemesis, or right. if you have a friend, or you're just curious. Or you you're like, look or you could be like me, and you could, like, copy and paste all of it into a spreadsheet so that I could play with it for hours on end. <laughs> there as, we you know. go. <laughs> what did you learn? What's um, I most? really haven't dug too deep into it. I just was like, I was printing stuff out this morning. Um, on the teacher side, before I go over to the um, city side, um, the the school district gave the information a little bit differently than um, the city side did. The school provided how much was paid to somebody and how many sick days and vacation days were paid out at retirement, which was kind of disturbing because there were many that were paid out many days. Um like 90 sick days. Oh, wow. So like it rolls many, over many, yeah. from year to year? Oh, yeah. They just keep banking And, and just to remind our, our viewers back home, uh, we talked about this a, a few weeks ago, but, you know, we're talking about teachers in general only work eight months a year? Is um, it eight and a half months I think a it's got to right? be eight and a half. Right? So, so, you know, when you see these salaries and you see these... Uh, you know, you hear these numbers. Remember that the, the, if it, you're only working eight and a half, right. uh, you know, months well, a year. And honestly, you know, I don't really have such a large issue with, with teachers and, you know, well, the, and, but, the, but you know what? Like that whole myth about, oh, they're so, so struggling. I well, mean, and the that average has salary is right. like 70000 Well, I, right? I, I printed out, I only, on the teacher side, because I hadn't really dug in too much. Um, I just printed out everybody who made $75,000 a year or more just for teachers, not administrators. And I've got like four pages of names. And I don't understand, like, what's, I realize not all teachers are, like, teaching first grade is not the same as teaching high school science, right? I get that. But we have a teacher at West High School who's making $117,000 a year. 
Nice work if you can right. get it and for I was eight like, months. Oh, and oh, that excludes all benefits. Right, that's just dollars. That's so just I was like, like what you're getting for your paycheck. That's a lot of money. How does that happen? So, because I'm like, well, how does somebody get to $117,000? Because I don't think we're basing our salaries on the job. We base it on how seniority long somebody seniority and, and certifications. Degrees. Yeah. And I don't know how many degrees you really need to teach the same course that you... But, but, and, and so I believe that there is a education bubble that right. is being funded mm. primarily by the federal government who got their finger in the pie. Yes. So in the same way that we see in, um, in healthcare for everyone who's like, why do the healthcare costs keep going up? Well, because of crony. Yeah, because of government <laughs> and because of cronyism. But in, in the education market, we have... A, a bubble, right? Yes. And part of that bubble is sort of being, uh, talk about sort of circular Kafkaesque logic, yeah. right? Is there's this system where they're like, the more degrees you get, the more money you can earn. So what does that do? That creates an incentive for all these people to go get secondary degrees. And don't get me wrong, I have a low degree. Right. I have an arts degree that I went and did in my right. 30s just right. because I was like, eh, I want to do this. So I get it. I get people who want right. to go back to school who want to learn those things. But because we're tying the contracts right. to these certifications, now you're creating this market for all these people to go get, get more secondary and spend degrees, more money on the colleges, which and then get the into college. more student debt. Yeah. And then we create this entire class of people who don't really need a master's well, or a, a PhD. I had a conversation with somebody the other day and I never, I had hadn't really thought about it. We always seem to have a uh, shortage of superintendents. Like when we have, when we are looking for a superintendent, you know, there's not like 150, there's not hundreds and hundreds of people. Find, and the, they had a theory. In order to be a superintendent, you have to um, get your PhD usually. Mm -hmm. So you've got people who have, are making $117,000 as a teacher without the added responsibility of being an administrator. But in order for me to move up that next step, I'm going to have to invest in getting this PhD. And do I really want the grief that goes along with that job for just, a, you know, to get up another $30,000 a year? So, well, also, I, I mean, we don't need necessarily more people with PhDs. No. I mean, that's sort of part of when we look at then the everybody, education right, bubble, Then everybody starts thinking every just what they learned in school, not what they're... Well, well not only that, you, you create this thing where... I mean, we see it now. So, so when I was like 16, my, my dream job was, I was like, oh, I want to be a professor in, you know, the English literature one day when I grow up, right? And, and I've come a long way since then. But like, that was something I wanted to yeah. do. But then, you know, like, as you learn things, you're like, well, can, there, there's X amount of universities. Mm -hmm. Sure, the internet and online stuff has really broadened things. So people who are truly talented teachers, things like the Khan Academy. Yep. Like if you want to learn that the, the, the there's most ways brilliant to learn people now. out there can teach you, right? But if you still want to go to a traditional brick and mortar, the problem is if we're creating all these people with masters and PhDs, right. but the number of tenured positions it's pretty much limited. Yeah. So now you're creating like these these yeah. frustrated people right, because I've got this PhD, but I a, can only get a forty thousand dollar job. Okay, well. you know. So I heard about, and I think this is really cool. I have no idea what it is, so I will find out and come come tell us all yeah. next year. But I saw an article yesterday about a uh, a woman in Boston who's trying out a sort of school choice model that's going to be sort of like Airbnb or something. So I think what it's going to be is this market for tutors. Yeah. And then for people who want to fit a tutor with a child. Yeah. Like some kind of, there's yeah. an app for that. There's kind gotta of thing. be. And I was like, oh, that sounds really neat. And so once again, like that's the exciting thing is if we can just let people experiment right. and say there are a million ways to learn why right. are we stuck in this 1800s model because we don't want to let go and because there's unions i really i hate to keep saying it's the unions but the unions do not want to let go because if we if we offer too many opportunities they can't control the, that group of, of people anymore and i i i just don't no no on the unions <laughs> um 
So anyway, since we're almost, we're running out of time. Oh, um, we are? Wow. So we're not going to talk about city salaries this week. <laughs> we'll talk about those another week, which will give me more time to look into things. Which many of them are also may, shocking. More right. than 100 people um, made more than $100,000. It's, you know. It's a lot. Well, the, the, the bigger concern in both sides is not just the salary dollar. It is the benefits, and that's the part that we don't really see. Even when we look at these reports, you can see, like, wow, that's a lot of money. But what we're not really seeing is how much we're spending to pay the pension for the next 20 Which or 30 are years. unfunded, You know, people. I mean, and these payouts in the city side. I mean, people, people retire, and they got more than a half a year's salary in payout. How You don't have to be a mathematician, folks. You don't. You just don't. It's, it just doesn't add up. <laughs> Anyways, um, did you watch the Christmas parade at all? I went downtown, watched a half, half of it. I did not watch the parade per se, but I was stuck in the parade traffic oh, for a while. We were smart. <laughs> we went around and we got on the other side. We didn't realize. And we did some things in Hooksit. And then to leave, we went all the way down to Queen City. See, we, we had came, a plan. We came from Hooksit and we came down yeah, past you came out. Dacta, And then you were uh, stuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not too late to visit the downtown holiday market, which is in the Brady Sullivan Plaza, which is right across the street from where we are now. Um, right there, the one where, you know, the plaza, the tall building. Um, Thursday the 12th, so that's um, day after tomorrow. Thursday the 19th, 10 to 5.30. And Saturday, this Saturday the 14th, and next Saturday the 21st, 9 to 3, series of craft markets held inside the plaza. 50 plus vendors set up selling amazing oh, homemade products. Right? It's really neat. It gives you a reason to go in that building. Um, I also <laughs> wanted to, I noticed in the paper today, Oh, can I just say another random thing? Yes. I saw it really made me laugh. I'm sorry, I'm on like Facebook memes today, but I saw a Christmas ornament that said, Oh, uh, uh, he uh, hung with, himself. With, with a picture of Epstein. Epstein. I didn't hang this. this didn't hang it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, I also read an article in the paper. Uh, actually, I think it was a Manchester Ink Link. Um, the old Lorena's Cantina temporarily, maybe permanently, has Apotheca, which is from Goffstown. Oh, one right, of my favorite the places the in Goffstown. Shop, yeah. um, they're trying it out. Um, oh, which is cool. a good way they of do, doing they things. They do like, and they have really cute gifts and stuff. stuff. It's a lot of gifts. I buy a lot of my journals um, there. Great. Like greeting cards, that kind of stuff. I wish I could find it. It's a pop up. They're calling it a pop up shop. The one thing from the article that kind of made the spidey sense on my neck stirred up is um, Liz Hitchcock, who's doing a lot of development and good for her for doing it and everything, um, kind of made a comment. We want something in there that fits with the core values we're trying to grow in the downtown. And it kind of made me go, what, what do you mean we're core values? We have core values in the market, or we just want businesses that people want to shop at well i, don't, see, I just don't want people's personal here's what the things. free market offers folks is you don't have to actually figure out what the core values are you just open your store and, and see, people's values I mean. are so the same as i don't really want business. developers picking and choosing what type of businesses we're going to be able to shop at downtown i would like businesses who have business ideas i mean i'm thrilled i'd love to i love apotheca in goffstown i'll make it a point of stopping in between now and christmas to check out their store here uh, i do like to shop local i also like to shop online and get the best deals in the world and I shop at Walmart, so don't hate me. And um. also, if anyone is wondering how we make the world more free and fair, we do it through the market. That's right. Um, so anyways, that's all I really have. Um, I think there's still a concert or two going on at the Rex. I think if you wanted to see, I think this Thursday is the last day for a Christmas carol at the Palace. So if you didn't get out... Thursday is your last chance. The Nutcracker's over, uh, but there's, there's, <laughs> and there's a show in Boston that just started called the Slut Cracker. Oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> which uh, is a spoof satire. And I was like, I have no idea what it was, but I heard about it on the radio, um, and they said it was pretty fun and good. So maybe if you're remember looking for that, a you know, this is Boston. the season of giving. So you know, maybe help out your local charities. Maybe donate to the Man Manchester Animal Shelter or the Manchester Dog Park Association or one of the food banks or a shelter or the veterans group. Something, you know, do something. Yeah, Liberty you, House. It actually makes you feel option. really good when you help other people. It's um, true. That's all I got. That's all we we'll got. We'll be back next week. It's raining out. It's like 50 degrees outside, so we should be back next week unless we're, we get another two feet of snow or something. We should. Anyways, have Thanks, a great guys. weekend. Bye. Bye.